I want to speak on fighting the hardest battle. Fighting the hardest battle. And the hardest battle to fight is to overcome oneself. The hardest battle you have to fight is to overcome yourself. Fighting invisible forces, they are not the others. Fighting your fellow human being, you are, that is not even given to you. You are not meant to fight with your neighbors, with your fellow human. You are to live with them. You got to be congenial. But when you are yet to overcome yourself, you begin to have issues with people around you. Now, follow me to the book of Romans, chapter 7. And I will read verses 15 to 25. Romans, chapter 7, verses 15 to 25. Don't forget, fighting the hardest battle. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now, it is no longer high who do it but sin that dwells in me. For I know that a mean that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For it will pre it will for to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Fighting the hardest battle. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of death. I thank God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, but with the flesh, the law, of sin. May the Lord bless this word in our heart in the name of Jesus. Now that you have been converted, now that you are joyous, that you are born again, that you have the spirit of God and you are being led of the spirit and you have done away with your whole life, but you just discover that there is a new war, a new battle that starts within that battle does emerge within. You knew it that you have been saved. You knew it that your sins have been forgiven. But now you have problem with sin within. That is the hardest battle you need to fight. You need to overcome yourself. Yes. This is where many believers do not know the way out. And so what they do is to struggle. They struggle only to suffer repeated defeat. Yeah. And uh, these things are the works of the flesh. For some people, their struggle is with immorality. Lost. Some struggle with hunger. Some, it is pride. Some, it is lie. They tell lies and has become part of them such that even now that they are saved and they knew that they are born again and it is not a fake experience, but they just see that even when they said they will not tell lies again, they find themselves doing it. For some people, it is 
struggle to drink beer. Whatever is your own. Whatever is your own. God is here to help you. To help you. But we need to tell you that yourself, your very self, yes, yourself, that you, Adamic nature in you, it is stubborn, arrogant, and deviant to corrections. It cannot be improved. Fasting and prayer cannot overcome yourself. And I also need to let you know that this self-life in you is a persecutor to the spirit life. And in fact, it's a pollutant. It will pollute every deposit of grace in your life and make your life a mess. In fact, the only mission that this self, which is the enemy within you, has is not only to pollute you, but to make your life a wreck and to destroy it. But God has done everything for us. We just need to know what God has done for us. Don't forget, if you want to understand yourself, you can liken it to the life of Cain. Cain murdered Abel. That is the persecution we are talking about. So, you cannot pamper yourself. Please stop pampering yourself. Mm -mm. And stop going for training. May I tell you, even discipleship training is not an antidote. Yes, it's not an antidote. <laughs> it's not an antidote. It's a miracle. God has made provision to handle this Addis battle. My prayer for you as you are hearing me is that God will open your eyes to see God's own way of deliverance. Now, let's see the way out. Now, sin has two sides. Just as the way God deals with man's sins is also two-sided. Sin has two sides. Yes. And God also has dealt with sin, with man's sin, in also two-sided way. Now, one side of sin is towards God. And the other side of sin is in us. Now, as regards sin before God, God's provision to handle that is the washing of the blood of the Lord. So, the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus handles our sin towards God. Now, for the sin in us, God's provision for our deliverance is the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please don't forget, the blood undoes the problem of sin towards God. It cleanses it. And before God, God sees you as holy. But there is another side of sin in us. That is the struggle that I've read to you about in this Romans chapter 7, verse 15 to, to, to 25. God's provision which the man in this Romans chapter 7 did not quickly realize until verse 25 is the provision of the cross. So, the sin before God requires God's forbearance and forgiveness. The sin in us demands liberty and emancipation. What you needed now is liberty and em emancipation because the more you sin here, the more you allow God to be forbearing your sin and you keep on forgiving. And that's what Romans chapter 6 verse 1 say. Do we continue in sin and say grace will abound? Do we continue to sin and continue to ask for forgiveness? No, 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 no. When we sin, we torment God because God is holy. When you sin, when we sin, we, we, we torment him. And God does not want that. So, the provision of God to handle our emancipation and deliverance is the cross of Christ.
Now, how do we practically go about this? Now, number one is dead. Romans 6 is. Romans 6 is. Romans 6 is. Eh? Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. You don't need to kill yourself. Jesus has done that for you. He took you, he took me along when he was going to the cross. And we all died in him. You got to know that. And it is the revelation of the spirit that will bring that to your spirit. And that brings emancipation and liberty. Said that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Then number two, you have to cast this old man out. Galatians chapter 4, just like Abraham was commanded to cast out the bond woman and her son in Galatians 4, 29 to 30. So also, you must cast out the works of the flesh in you. You have to take it out. And you, stop, you have to stop hiding it. You have to stop covering sin with sins. Number three, you have to understand the secret of our daily victory. God has given up the secret. And there are four secrets. Number one is knowing. As I read to you, Romans 6, 6. Then number two is reckon. Verse 11 says, likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead in to sin. But I lie to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now once you understand the fact that Jesus took you to the cross, that part of you that love to sin, he laid it to the cross. Now, reckon yourself to be dead to sin and you are alive to God. The third secret there, number is verse 13. Say, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead. That is, yield your body part, not to commit sin, but to allow Christ that lives in you to walk in you and to work out what is doing you. And the last one is to walk in the spirit. Galatians 5, 16. Galatians 5, verse 16. The word of God says, mm. and I say, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the basis of walking in the spirit is to experience what Paul experienced with other fellows. Galatians 2.20 said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes, walk in the Spirit. Stop allowing your flesh to dominate you, for you have been crucified with Christ. Let us pray. Lord, give me light. Let me understand what you have done for me. Yes, let me walk in the consciousness of the fact that I am dead. You took me along where you are going on the cross. Yes. Yes, Lord. I must know this reality. I must walk in it by reckoning myself and yielding myself and walking in the spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, confirm your word in the life of your people. Give them deeper understanding. More than I can explain in these few minutes of broadcast. May you give them deeper revelation and deeper insight into what you have done and grant them liberty and emancipation. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We believe you have been blessed by the word of God you just heard. For further help or counsel, call this number 0806-615-6208 or 0703-284-4129. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Struggle Media for more spiritual messages. Or visit our website at www.struggomedia.com to download those messages for free. Thank you for staying to the end of this program. Join us again, same station, same time in next week. God bless you.
Bye.